Well, then today is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and also the 30th of June, the anniversary, the 25th anniversary of uh, Archbishop Lefebvre's consecration of the four bishops. Uh, and it's good to be here in St. Athanasius here in Virginia on this day. And uh, the um, right, in case you don't know me, and if, uh, my name is Father Joseph Pfeiffer, a priest at the Society of St. Pius X, who is uh, now one of the priests of the resistance against the neo-modernism of the neo-Society of St. Pius X. And uh, Father Ringrose in this parish has been uh, one of our principal supporters and is hosting us today for the celebration of that 25th anniversary. And also, you have here the first stained glass window of Marcel Lefebvre. And uh, Father Ringrose mentions his, the halo is not yet there, but it will be applied someday. And uh, we say with the Marcel Lefebvre that he is certainly in heaven, and the, the halo will be applied when the church canonizes him in the due time. But he was the great churchman of the 20th century, especially the latter part of the 20th century, who saved the church. And we celebrate this great day in the history of the 20th century, the 25th anniversary of it, today. The epistle for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, or rather the gospel for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, is taken from the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware, excuse me, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 8. At that time, when there was a great crowd with Jesus, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples together and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, for behold, they have now been with me three days, and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away to their homes fasting, they will faint on the way. For some of them have come from a distance. And his disciples answered him, How will anyone be able to satisfy the, these with bread here in the desert? He asked them, How many loaves have you? And they said, Seven. And he bade the crowd to recline on the ground. Then taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few little fishes, and he blessed them and ordered them to be distributed. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up what was left of the fragments, seven baskets. Now those who had eaten were about 4,000, and he dismissed them. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is especially an especially sacred day in the history of the Catholic Church. There were days in the last 2,000 years that have shaped the course of history. One of those days was October the 7th, 1571, when St. Pius V made two great victories. Two great victories against the devil. It was a physical victory, and that physical victory was that on that day in 1571, crusaders from Spain led by a weak commander, went into battle against the Muslims at Lepanto. And had this battle not taken place, and had there not been the victory of the Catholics, there would no longer be a Catholic Europe. Christendom would have been completely destroyed. All of Christendom was under battle because of the Protestants, destroying from within, because of weak and bad Catholic leaders and kings besides. 
And only the Spanish, a few others, rose up to the defense of the Holy Church when all of Europe should have risen up. And they went into battle, a few ships against many. And there was a saint at that time who shaped the course of history, and his name was Pius V. And he realized that when this battle would happen, in the, in the, that there was no way in which this small fleet could defeat the great fleet of the Muslims without the help of the greatest of all warriors that could be called upon to protect the church. And in the, in the time of the greatest battle, when there is the most grave danger, we all turn to our mothers. And the greatest warrior that God ever created to fight against the devil was his mother. And so St. Pius V, who was himself a Dominican and could not remove his white habit of Dominican even when he became Pope and Popes are supposed to wear red. And he refused, he wore white, the habit of the Dominicans. And then for, because of the greatness of this Pope, all popes changed their clothes from that day forward. And the great day in the life of St. Pius V was October the 7th, 1571. He solidified the principal weapon that would be needed in the end times when Our Lady would have to be called upon again to bring a great victory. He created rosary sodalities throughout all of Europe. He says the kings will not fight. The Catholic soldiers will not fight. Only Spain. And this is the great glory of Spain. Therefore, they cannot fight alone. You fight with them with your rosaries. I am a Dominican and this is our prayer. I want to make this a special prayer for all Catholics. Not just a Dominican prayer anymore. For our Holy Mother gave this prayer to St. Dominic, our founder. To fight against heresies. When Dominic was given this weapon by our Holy Mother, he asked for wisdom. He asked for intelligence. He asked for the strength to conquer the heresies. And God blessed Dominic with great wisdom and great intelligence and the strength to conquer heresies in one way. What Our Lady told him essentially, your preaching must be done. You must preach the truth. You must boldly condemn the Albigensians that are in the process of destroying the Catholic Church and endangering the whole faith in the 1200s. But you will defeat them with this weapon. And she handed to him the rosary. And St. Pius V gave all of us that weapon on October the 7th, 1571. And with the rosary in his hands, he was in Rome. And at the same time, there was a war far away in Lepanto. And he saw the vision of the battle. He, the great saint, saw the vision with a rosary in his hands. And a bunch of wimpy soldiers led by a man who was an illegitimate son who spoke with a lisp <laughs> defeated the enemies of God. And we are Catholics because of it. Another day as important as October the 7th, 1571 was June the 30th 1988. It was a day that changed the face of the history of the Catholic Church. This is the most important day of the 20th century. Why is that? Because the war continues between heaven and hell, not between the Americans and the Russians who are friends anyway. Not between capitalism and communism, but between God and the devil. Between His Holy Church 
and the church of Satan. And it is a war over souls. There are now seven billion of them on our planet. And God wants every one of them in heaven. And the devil wants every one of them in hell. And the devil has a plan. And the devil has soldiers. And the devil has weapons. So many. And God has a plan. And God wants soldiers. And God has weapons. So few. It is like the time of Gideon. Gideon with 300 soldiers defeated 60,000 of the enemies of God. And they went into battle with a different kind of weapon. They didn't carry swords. They carried trumpets. They didn't carry shields. They carried clay pots. They didn't sneak into the night. They lit a lantern. And with a lantern in the night, and with a clay pot, and with a trumpet, they destroyed the enemies of God. Because of the power of God. One day, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre will be raised to the altar as the great saint of the end of the 20th century. And this is a day in which it is a very great day to be a member of the Society of St. Pius X. There are many holy orders in the church founded by many saints. But it is a great privilege to be a son of the Archbishop who protected the whole church 1988, what did he do? He saved the church. St. Paul tells us, Fides ex auditu. Faith comes by hearing. Nowadays, there is a new group that thinks faith comes by blogging. www.ibelieveinjesus.com Faith does not come by blogging. God has not found a new way to give the faith. Fides ex auditu. Faith comes by hearing. And St. Paul tells us in the Romans chapter 10, Fides ex auditu. Faith comes by hearing. But how can there be a hearing unless there be preachers? And how can they be preachers unless they be sent? Who sends the preachers? He is called the bishop. The bishop is the one who makes preachers. The bishop is the one who makes priests. And notice that our preaching, it is not like under the preaching of the Protestants. It is not like the, the preaching of those that are wise men. We preach from sacrifice. Our power comes from blood. Our power comes from war. Our power comes from conflict. Every time that a priest goes to the holy sacrifice of the Mass, he stands at the bottom of a mountain. St. Jerome says, it is the tallest mountain in the world. And one thing that a priest is, says St. Jerome, is a mountain climber. It's a battle to climb a mountain. Look at all the high hills, says St. Jerome. Is Everest the highest? It is not. Of all the high hills in the world, there is none higher than the little mount of Calvary. And why is it higher? For to carry the greatest weight up the smallest hill is greater than to carry little weight up the greatest mountain. And therefore the greatest make weight makes the smallest hill into the greatest mountain. And only Christ could carry that great weight up the hill. 
And every time the priest says the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, he begins at the bottom of a mountain. These three steps, they are the steps of Calvary. And before the priest goes into this pulpit, he must first climb those steps. Because we are not educators. We are not teaching you things that you are meant to learn in the classroom in order that you might pass a test and get a worthless piece of paper that says you are a theologian. We climb the rock of Calvary. We go to the altar of God. There we are with Jesus Christ in the sacrifice. And on the top of that mountain, we hear his words in the epistle, the Old Testament, and the teaching of the catechism. We stand and listen to his words in the gospel. The words that he spoke on the mount of Calvary. The words that he spoke on the mount of Beatitudes. And then we contemplate... Then the priest travels to the pulpit. And when our Lord Jesus, when St. Paul says, How can there be faith? Fides ex auditu. Not only do the faithful have to hear the faith, but the priest must hear the faith. Not only must the priest hear the faith, but the bishop must hear the faith. And not only must the bishop hear the faith, but the pope must hear the faith. It must enter into the ears. And it cannot be in our souls if it is not entered into our ears. It does not enter into our ears unless there are preachers. And these preachers are not preachers unless they are warriors. Unless they have climbed the mountain of Calvary. Unless they have been at the foot of the cross. Archbishop Lefebvre climbed the mountain of Calvary many times. On that mountain we learn, if you stand close to the cross, you will find that our Lord Jesus Christ taught seven last words. They are the summary in a few words of everything God has ever spoken to man. But he is dying on the cross. When a man is dying and speaking his sacred words, you must be close in order to hear. Therefore, Christ gathers his apostles close around him. And it is necessary to recognize there can be no preaching of the truth unless there is a true sacrifice. And this preaching of the truth comes from the true sacrifice. The devil has destroyed many good priests in the world today. There are so many good priests. We have met many of them. So many good priests that say the new mass. So many good priests that say both masses, new and old. But they cannot communicate the truth as it has been communicated for the last 2,000 years because they are not on the right mountain. They are not next to the right cross. They are not close enough to the wounds of Christ. Therefore, even when they say things that are true, it doesn't come out right. We are in a church in which preachers cannot preach unless they be sent. And they cannot be sent unless there be bishops. And these bishops cannot be senders unless they have been at the cross of Christ. The great tragedy of the 20th century. It was a century of the abandonment of the cross of Jesus Christ by the bishops. It was the abandonment of the cross of Jesus Christ by the priests. It was the abandonment of the cross of Jesus Christ by the Holy Father. It was the fulfillment of the prophecy of Our Lady when she said in La Salette, Rome shall become the seat of the Antichrist. 
And that is what has happened. All of a sudden, to be a Catholic bishop seems impossible. Now, Rosh Hashanah Lefebvre said in 88, Why do we consecrate these bishops? Why must we do? I am not doing this to continue my work. It is our little effort to preserve the Catholic priesthood. I am not doing this to continue my work. On the 25th anniversary, Angelus, the new Angelus of the Society of St. Pius X, the sons of Archbishop Lefebvre say he was continuing his work. He was doing Operation Survival in order that the Society of St. Pius X may survive. We are not here for the survival of the Society of St. Pius X. We are here for the survival of our Holy Mother, the Church. We are here for the survival of the Catholic priesthood. We are here for the survival of the Catholic truth and the Catholic faith. That's why we are here. We cannot be foolish and say, Oh, if, if I don't do it, uh, someone else will. I must be humble. There is a man drowning. The house is on fire and it's burning. I'm not a fireman. What am I supposed to do? I can't go in and save him. I know what I'll do. I'll pray the fireman comes soon. <laughs> And watch him burn. And watch him drown. Greater love than this no man hath than he lay down his life for his friends. Christ demanded, if you see your neighbor dying, you see your neighbor going down into hell, you see your neighbor in danger, you go and pull that neighbor out of danger. You save him. And if you do not, do not claim innocence. When we go before our Maker, He shall ask. Or Zulafev said, He will ask, What did you do with my church? What did you do with my priesthood? And as He said in the famous sermon in 1976 in Lille, and all the people were gathered round in that ordination on which Bishop Williamson was ordained a priest. And he said, I cannot lend my hand to the destruction of the church. I cannot lend my hand to the destruction of the church. And if we stand by and we do nothing as the church goes down, and we stand by and we do nothing as our beloved society of St. Pius X collapses, we are guilty. We must preach the truth. And this truth comes from the cross. And why do we preach it? That souls might come to the cross and drink the blood of Christ. And when they come to that cross, they will find it not hard to drink. Because at the foot of that cross is His Holy Mother. And the priests must be like St. John. Always next to the mother at the foot of the cross of the son. Our sister Lefebvre was that. The heart of the mother and the heart of the son must enter into the priests. And when the heart of our Holy Mother and the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ enters into the priest, he must be filled with a desire to save souls. And that is why we preach the truth. To save souls. To bring souls to Jesus Christ. And that is why Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre consecrated bishops. 
to save souls because he knows that souls cannot be saved unless they hear the truth. And they cannot hear the truth unless it is preached. And it cannot be preached unless the preacher is attached to the holy sacrifice of the Mass and all of the words of Christ without any admixture with error and with no errors. No heresies. Let the lies in. And it is like the smallest prick that enters into a balloon. The smallest prick touches a balloon and the balloon is finished. And so we cannot let the smallest grave error, not even have not only heresies, but error, other errors, enter into the holy church. It will destroy it. St. Ambrose says in his sermon two weeks ago, Consider the two boats. The boat of St. Peter and the boat of St. Peter. The boat of St. Peter and the gospel of St. Luke. And the boat of St. Peter and the gospel of St. Matthew. Or in the gospel of St. Luke. He was at the, 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 the shore. And he was in the boat of Peter was our Lord Jesus Christ. And the waves were calm. And there was no wind. And he preached to the people. And they listened to his words. And he asked them to let out for a great to launch into the deep, and there was a great catch of fish. In the boat of St. Matthew, Christ was not awake, he was asleep. The waves were not calm, there was a great storm. And why was this? St. Ambrose says it was because of Judas. When St. Peter set out in the first boat, there was no Judas on the boat. But when St. Peter was crossing on the boat, there was a Judas on the boat. And because Judas was on the boat, Christ fell asleep. Because Judas was on a boat, Christ could not speak. Because Judas was on the boat, he fell asleep. And why did he fall asleep? He fell asleep for Peter, says St. Ambrose. Today, there are many Judases on the boat. And the boat is in danger of perishing. Why is this boat in danger of perishing, says St. Ambrose? Because there is only one thing that endangers the church. And that is the wind of false doctrine. Which kicks up the waves of sin. And tosses the ship of the church. And when it is being tossed, how can they preach? And Christ falls asleep. This is what happened at Vatican Council too. He falls asleep. While he is asleep, says St. Ambrose, he prays for Peter. What are we doing? Archis Lefebvre, he says, or rather Bishop de Castro Meyer, speaking of the importance of these consecrations, says, in 1988, we live in an unprecedented crisis in the church. A crisis which touches its very, it in its very essence. In its substance even, which the holy sacrifice of the mass and the Catholic priesthood, which is the holy sacrifice of the mass and the Catholic priesthood, the two mysteries essentially united, because without the holy priesthood there is no holy sacrifice of the mass, and consequently no form of public worship whatsoever. Equally, it is on this basis that one constructs a social reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am here, says Bishop de Castro Meyer, to accomplish my duty, the duty of a bishop who came from Brazil and the glory of Brazil, to make a public profession of the faith. I wish to manifest here my sincere and profound adherence to the position of His Excellency Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, which is dictated by his fidelity to the church of all centuries. It is not dictated by Marcel Lefebvre's holiness, by Marcel Lefebvre's wisdom, by Marcel Lefebvre's prudence. Bishop de Castro Meyer cares little about Marcel Lefebvre's wisdom. He cares little about his prudence. Bishop de Castro Meyer says, and I have my sincere and profound adherence to the position of His Excellency Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, which is dictated by his fidelity to the Church of all centuries. The two of us, from two different countries, from two different continents, from two different worlds, have drunk at the same source, which is that of the Holy Catholic 
Apostolic and Roman Church. That is why our, our Bishop de Castro Meyer was there at the consecrations 25 years ago. We find here today we have two monasteries represented from Brazil, the same glorious place of Bishop de Castro Meyer. We have Brazilian monks and Brazilian priests here today to celebrate the 25th anniversary. There were three original bishops chosen by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. Two of them are here today. He chose Father Miguel Four to be a bishop. He is here today. Who was the founder of the Society of St. Pius X's work in South America. And who started the whole of the missions of South America, who has been living in that Spanish-speaking world for the last 35 years, who founded the seminary of the Society of St. Pius X in Buenos Aires, who Marcius Lefebvre had such confidence in that he talked to him in 1980, in early 88 or late 87, and said, I want you to be one of the three bishops that I will consecrate. At that time it was three and not four. And Father Four said, no, Consecrate, rather, a real Spanish priest, Spanish great father de Galareta instead. And the second was Father Williamson and Father Tissier de Malaray. Two of those original three bishops chosen by Sister Lefebvre are here today. What was in his mind? He wanted priests of faith who would stand firm for the faith. And this is what has happened 25 years later, and it is the glory of Archers of Lefebvre that two of the original three that he chose are here today in Vienna, Virginia, next to the stained glass window put there by Father Ringroth. <laughs> it is a time of glory that we can stand for the truth while the world rejects it. Now the world of the SSPX rejects its own heritage. I am a priest of the society. There are others as well. And we refuse to reject the heritage of our founder. We love the heritage of our founder. We will stand for that heritage. And we will listen to what he heard. And we will say what he heard. Here Archers of Lefebvre speaks, I am simply a bishop of the Catholic Church who is continuing to transmit Catholic doctrine. I think, and this will certainly not be too far, too far off, that you will be able to engrave on my tombstone these words of St. Paul, Tradidi quoted Achepi, I have handed down what I have received, nothing else. It seems to me, my dear brethren, that I hear the voices of all these popes, Gregory the Sixteenth, Pius the Ninth, Leo the Thirteenth, Saint Pius the Tenth, Benedict the Fifteenth, Pius the Eleventh, Pius the Twelfth, telling us, please, we beseech you, what are you going to do with our teachings, with our preaching, with the Catholic faith, are you going to abandon it? Are you going to let it disappear from this earth? Please, please, continue to keep this treasure which we have given you. Do not abandon the faithful. Do not abandon the church. Continue the church. Indeed, since the council, what we formally condemned, say these popes, the present Roman authorities have embraced and are professing. That was the old days. That was 88. Now it's worse. Now they've added more heresies. Now they've added more wicked professions. Now they've added more deviousness. Now they have mixed their lies with the holy sacrifice of the Mass. They have mixed their lies with incense. They've mixed their lies with the modern fraternity of St. Peter and the Institute of Christ the King who are traitors to Catholic faith. Though many of them are good men with good hearts, 
but they are objective traitors of the Catholic faith because they are celebrating the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass and they are putting on the facade of Catholic tradition without the substance. Because they accept, like a wife accepting a second and third wife to live in the house with her husband, as long as she gets the principal place. Any wife that accepts a second and third wife in the house is a wicked woman. And there cannot be such a thing in the Catholic Church. Cannot be. And this is the objective betrayal of the fraternity of St. Peter. If some of you go to the indult, do not go anymore. It is a betrayal of the faith. Though they are good men, many of them. It is not about the goodness or badness of the man. There is only one man that matters, and he's the one that died on the cross. And we listen to him. And he said, he that is not with me fully <coughs> is against me completely. He that gathers not with me scatters. Scatters. No neutral ground. We either gather with Christ or we scatter away from Christ. You either bring souls to Him or you throw them away from Him. You cannot be neutral. There is no Switzerland in the Catholic Church. We now have a Swiss bishop leading the society. And he wants us to become a Switzerland in the SSPX. He wants us to become neutral. He wants us to become balanced. Jesus Christ was not balanced. The saints were not balanced. Let the wise men of the world be balanced. We charged full on against the enemies of Christ. We follow Christ wherever he leads. And if he is out in the ocean, and we are in the boat. We jump out of the boat. And we walk across the sea. That's what Peter did. And that was, the, that was the great act of Peter in the third boat. Go where Christ is. This is what we must do. And we must preserve the Holy Catholic Church. And it is preserved by hearing. Not only must the faithful hear, but the priest must hear. And an Archbishop of Fev heard the voices of Pius IX, of all the great saints. And he says, you new bishops, you are not alone. You have with you all of the popes, all the way up to Pius XII. They are all with you. We have all the saints. St. Bernard says, I do not stand alone. I do not stand on the ground. I stand on the shoulders of my fathers. That's what St. Bernard said. Speaking to one of the heretics. You think you are tall? I am taller than you, he said. Hmm? Maybe Bernard was short in stature. You think you're tall? I'm taller than you. It's like a little boy making a dunk. You just give him to uh, Will Chamberlain or somebody, and you, if you gave him a ball, he picks him up. Dunk. It's real easy. Hmm? Stand on the shoulders of giants. St. Bernard says in his letter 77, I stand on the shoulders of giants. I stand boldly because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And one of those giants is named Augustine. And he names them. Another is Ambrose. We must stand upon the shoulders of giants. And we must have confidence in the giants. Like a little boy in Syracuse, one of the local criminals, there's a lot of crime in our little neighborhood, a little bitty boy goes up against one of our boys in Syracuse, says, I'm going to beat you up. And our big boy says, okay, you're going to beat me up. I'm going to beat you up right now. He goes, okay, all right, just wait a minute, I'm going to get my brother. And he went to get his big brother. Then our guy left, because his big brother is a big brother. This is the way we speak to the devil. I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to get my brother. Just wait. I'm going to go and get the giants. We're going to stand on the shoulders of the giants. Our sister Lefebvre stood on the shoulders of giants. These are the great saints of 2,000 years. 
And he knew the weapons needed to defeat the devil. The holy sacrifice of the Mass. The integral Catholic faith. The holy rosary. And he made apostles. And he called our order the apostles of Jesus and Mary. We are the apostles of Jesus and Mary. We must be the apostles of Jesus and Mary. And our principal feast is the feast of the Immaculate Conception. Because they, she is the one. Who here in Mexico and Guadalupe said... She is Tetelokse, however you pronounce it. The one who crushes the head of the serpent. The one that crushes the head of the serpent. She is the Immaculate Conception. Why do we follow the Immaculate Conception? Because she crushes the serpent. As we mentioned sometimes, if you want to get a good view of the crushing of the head of the serpent, stay in the arms of Mary. You get a front row seat. And you're safe. But if you stay on the ground... Maybe the head of the serpent comes over you at the time that Mary crushes the serpent and that's a bad place to be. The safest place to be is in the arms of Mary. This is where Archbishop Lefebvre lived. That is why he made apostles of Jesus and Mary. And we must recognize the greatness of this day for the saving of our holy church. Not only our friends and enemies have also benefited from this great act of Archbishop Lefebvre. There will be no fraternity of St. Peter unless he consecrated those bishops. There will be no institute of Christ the King. There will be none of these indulged communities. There would not be any of them except for Archbishop Lefebvre. So we are grateful for his act to preserve the church. And we ask the grace to hear what he heard. The voice of the popes of the past. To do what he did and continue his work. This is what is necessary for the salvation of the church and souls. Not for the salvation of ourselves. Not for the salvation of our little society. Not for the salvation of our little parish. But we are out to conquer the whole world. Christ wants warriors that go to conquer the whole world for him. And answer the call. Or to the Feb answer the call all over the world. We must do the same. We must imitate our founder. And thank God for the gift of Archbishop Lefebvre to our whole church. And be faithful not to him, but to all he believed in, which is our holy church and holy faith. And we ask the grace that we be able to place upon our tombstones, each one of us, the same things that is placed upon his, Tradidi, Quoded, Achepi, and nothing else. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.